my name is Ben, and this Christmas the British Intelligence Agency put out this really clever puzzle that was a series of uh, one of a series of four puzzles. And um, in it, they have these row descriptors and this big array of cells, and you fill them in, and it's kind of like Sudoku or crossword. So anyway, I got to thinking like you could use a computer to brute force this, and there are optimizations like little clever hacks to make it go faster and faster. This is how you play. Taking the first row, for example, you see seven, three, one, one, seven. So that means you have to have a group of seven, then three, then one, then one, then seven. So we might do, for instance, like here, and then a group of three, and then you know this one, and this one, and then I don't know the last seven, um, and fill those in. And uh, you can move them around, but basically all of the descriptors of the rows and the columns have to match up. And ultimately, there's only one solution in which all of that occurs. Um, and so the first way to try is just a brute force method of trying every possible pattern on this array of 625 um, cells and, and filling them in. And I found out that that would actually take an eternity, like thousands and thousands and thousands of years for this Surface 3 uh, to figure out. So I said instead of that, I brute forced the rows. So I you know, randomly generate a row, see if it matches the descriptor um, that we're looking for, and to see how long that would take. And I took about 10 minutes per row um, and ended up taking about 11 hours to totally figure out. Um, so there's a better way. Uh, the next thing you could do is generate those rows. So instead of every possibility, you just start with those blocks, seven and three, one, one, seven, and start moving them around. And I think that's a much more efficient way of generating these and I talked too much and it actually already blew by it, but you could see they, how fast it generates these uh, banks of patterns. And it's like crazy fast. It's a matter of seconds instead of 10 hours. The next idea is when it comes to matching. So um, the matching or otherwise uh, the eliminating of possible patterns. Uh, what I did before was just to start at the top and move down. And what I noticed is that there were some row descriptors, say for instance this one, that only had one possible pattern. So why not just lock that one in and go to the next smallest number of possible patterns? And so that's what this algorithm does. And that chopped off a lot of time. At, uh, it only took 10 minutes. And this is what it looks like when it's figuring it out. But up, but up. Boom. And the last one is somebody said, I bet this is a QR code because they have no way of getting to the next puzzle and a QR code would make sense. So if you actually um, give it the hint of the squares of a QR code, the human element um, gives it a big head start and uh, you can see it move really fast in that case. And that one took a minute and 22. So. We went from eons to 11 hours to one hour to 10 minutes to like a minute and 22 seconds. And that was all with a bunch of pretty visualizations. If you actually take away those visuals, um, this is what the chart looks like and it gets it down to seven seconds. So you go from like thousands of years to seven seconds. Pretty cool.